Alright, so today we're going to continue our MagJS modal example. Um, we're going to add a value into the modal a menu, select menu, that we can retrieve the value once it's closed. So this is an extension of our existing modal example. So that's why you can already see it here. Let's just see, let's just review that for a little bit. So the result of our modal example is um, when we click the open button we can use our modal component, our module. And we're writing into it, writing hello modal, there's a built-in close button, and that's it. So you have a, a mag a module modal case. This is where we actually have the open button. The open button calls the mag module modal. And we tell it um, the state of it, it should be visible. We send it some content in the modal controller is reusable. So it's abstracted that everything gets sent through props, such as the visible state um, and the content here. And it's very simple. It's just checking the visible state, um, adding the content or uh, hiding it, and then switching the, the visible state um, to false probably a little more clear that way, whenever you click the close button. And that's all it does. And our template's in here. Remember, every mag module starts with an ID, but any of the state HTML can be any of the five element matchers, such as a tag name, an ID, a ca uh, class, uh, name attribute value, or data bind value attributes. Um, but the module itself has to be an ID, so it's unique. Alright, so why don't we start by adding our um, our select. So our select is going to be a module as well. It's going to be an inner module. So we're going to add that to our wrapper, which is our content area. And we just call it, yeah, that's fine, okay. <laughs> I was going to change it, but here, let's just... Uh, Create our select menu. And we have an option. And in MagJS, um, any of our element matches can become an array by the data that it matches to. So and our and the first that first matcher is your template. So if you want multiple of these, you simply pass the option. An array and it will repeat that as many times as you like. And to set an attribute, it's just uh, you send an object with an underscore in front of the property name. Why don't we wrap this in our module, which will be the select module. And our template is done. Now all we have to do is create a select module and our select module will be the content okay so first let's create a stub select and since we already have the HTML all we have to do is in our um, here in our function here is simply call our module Mag module our ID and then <clears throat> excuse me the module itself. So let's see what happens. There's nothing in there. Interesting. So in our wrapper, we were setting it to the magic um, or the special underscore HTML. But since we're just calling a module now, we don't really need to do that. Um, modules automatically bind. You don't have to actually attach it to anything because it's by the ID. So all we're going to do is simply, um, let me see here, simply call the function directly. So we're literally just doing a function call just to instantiate the module. That's number one. Oh, and there it is. Now currently it's empty, right? So, what we're going to do next is 
Let me create a snapshot so people can walk through the different steps of this tutorial. I will paste the link into the description of the video. So all we have to do next is stub out our um, component. And every component has a controller and a view. So it makes it pretty simple. All right, so now we have a stubbed out controller. And one of the first things we want to, actually we don't need a, con a controller in this one. We're just gonna have a view. Um, first thing we wanna do is set the option. So like I said, um, any element matcher can become uh, an array or repeatable item by simply giving it a data array. And it will use that first one as the template. So why don't we check that out? Oh, there we go, one, two, three. There it is. Okay, that's how simple MagJS is. All right, but clearly we want more than just that. So why don't we send in a property? Um, to our menu here. So there, the signature of module is there's three uh, arguments: the ID, the module, and the last argument is your props. And it's just an object literal. So we're going to send a list. Let's just do something real simple first, second, and third. And the view and the function get the same argument of props. The only difference is that view is called every time and controller is called only the first time the module is run. But in this case, I don't think it really matters. So we're just gonna do props.list like that. Check it out. And there you go, first, second, third. That's again, just how simple Mac.js is. All right, but clearly that's not enough for us, right? Hey, there's a few things missing here. The first thing that's missing is a way to, um, let's see, you probably need a way to get that value, right? To get that value um, a bind from the controller of the module. So we want something that will grab whatever value is at the select when we cl click close that our initializer controller here can read it. Okay, so I think what we're going to do first is simply create a binds function for our modal. So here's our modal. Our modal takes visible and content, right? And why don't we create a new property called binds? And all that's going to be is a function. Okay, and we're going to pass that to our modal controller. And our modal controller, this.binds, will equal our props.binds. And we'll call it when close is called state.binds. Just like that. Simple pass through. We can verify that it's being called <clears throat> by simply updating something in our modal case. Why don't we create a nice little h3 here? Our h3 is just our modal example. Dot dot dot. We'll create a little value container in here. Spend data bind equals, let's call it selected. Okay, so here we're just going to change that to whatever we like. All right, so you see modal example. Now we're going to our function is going to be call called when the close button is called. Okay, so let's check it out. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Creating another snapshot as people walk through the tutorial. 
All right, so the next thing we want to do is get some real value. Specifically, we want to get the value of the selected um, menu item. So first thing we need to do is probably create a setter in our select menu itself. Um, all right, why don't we do that? Why don't we create, actually, before we even do that, why don't we create a, a setter value in our, in our module? Because this is a, a setter value specific to our modal case, right? So in this case, we'll probably need a controller. we're going to probably pass something in here, like a default selected value, because we're, we're talking about the selected value of the menu. So we need a default value. Why don't we define that as a prop? Selected equal, let's say the second one. Okay. We create uh, this dot setter. Use our mag prop setter getter helper. And we're going to get that through our props selected or empty. Now we just have to simply pass in our modal case. Now this is getting a little big here. Why don't we take this function out just for readability's sake? Let me take that out. Let me create another variable here. Let's call it modally. And we're going to call our modally here. Modally. Oops. Modally. Well, it just opened there by itself, didn't it? Because the function is being called automatically, we're not binding it, so let's bind it. That way it's only called what we want. Oh, and we're probably going to need that state, right? Well, for now, let's just bind it. Okay, for now, when we run it, we click open, it closes, everything's fine. Okay. And we're going to pass in our selected props. Like, like that. And now we have a setter and getter that we can use that defaults to this value. And in our binds, let's give a little more room here for our JavaScript because I think we're done with the HTML, right? The HTML example template is pretty straightforward. I don't think we're going to change it. Let's take a last look. We have our H3, which is what we're manipulating right now for our selected value. We have our select modal or module with our template option as a content of a module modal, which is inside another modal. So we have a modal, modal, modal. So it's nested three layers deep. Now let's just look at the JavaScript. Okay. So that's a little clearer. So we have our props. We're setting a setter here. We're binding on click to open it. But we're not really using it here. So why don't we first off pass in the state here? Because we're gonna need that. Right? To make anything really happen here. And why don't we change state selected here? Let's say selected plus state dot setter. Like that. That makes sense.
select it equals second. But notice it's not our actual value yet. We haven't bound, bound it here. So it's just doing whatever our default is. So I think in our select menu here, we need to add a default. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do is create our select. So we need to capture our select. So what's going to do a, a delegated um, on change event. So in mag.js, events are attributes. So underscore has to start with underscore, all attributes. And then on change, that's the actual event. So any native event. So we're going to use our helper mag with prop to attach the value of the select menu on change and add it to our props setter, which we haven't passed in yet. So why don't we do that? So our setter is simply our state setter that we're getting from the state, which is defined over here. Okay, We're using it here. We're using it here. These are very useful. So on change, it should set it to that. Let's try it out. Oops, something happened. Okay. Oh, you know what's happening? Oh, well, first off, we have a typo. Let's try that again. All right. So whatever we uh, set it to should now become the value here when we close it. There you go. Select it equals second. Create a snapshot. Let's do that again. Oh, and did you notice how it defaulted now to the set value? Third. And now it's third when you open it because that's it's, the setter is being used throughout. Okay. Now the only thing that's a little strange here is that it's not defaulting to our default value here, right? It's it's using the current value, which might be okay in some cases, but why don't we make sure that the default value is being selected on load, okay? So all we have to do for that is probably loop through our uh, list here. to make sure that it's the right um, selected value. So we're going to have to return a uh, object. So in mag.js, whenever you want to have multiple uh, values to a specific element matcher, you have to return an object literal. And the underscore text or underscore HTML is your special helper to spe specify. See, it defaults to text normally. So if you want to do more, if you want to add attributes, and you still want the text, obviously, um, you have to specify that. So every attribute um, is automatically uh, prepended with an underscore. So here, we're simply doing what we had before and return the data. So we haven't really changed anything. We just allowed an option to add more attributes, right? Because we need a specific attribute called selected here, right, to our option. So this should act exactly the same as before. So first is selected. If I press close, it says selected equals second. And if I select third, and I press close, and that says selected equal third. Okay. Now the only difference now is that selected second is not defaulted anymore, right? See, here, let me show that again. See, if I get rid of this, and I open it, see, there is no selected default, okay? Let's put this back. Okay, so now we want to add a specific um, uh, selected, so let's say if item equal props dot selected and data 
dot underscore, that's our attribute, equals true. So all we're doing is we're matching the item to our selected, um, oh, we should need to set in the selector, sorry. So why don't we set that in selected equals state that setter, that's a way to get her in this case. Um, so now we have that available. So we're saying if item equals um, our property selected, then we are setting the data attribute selected to true. Simple as that. So let's try that out. So now our default is selected. Our pre-default is selected equals second. If I press close, so it's selected second. So it's now defaulting to our predefined. So let me see if I select third, close, that says third. But what happens when I open it? It goes to our defined one. So the only difference between this and before is that if I get rid of this now, it won't default initially to our initial value. See, it always goes to first. But then it continues with our selected one. So if now if I select something, it will always be the selected one. That's because of our prop setter and getter. That's the only reason for that. Okay. Actually, that's the default browser behavior. Sorry. <laughs> that's because the browser is remembering this, because we're not destroying it on close. We're just hiding it, remember. See, up here we just hide it. We don't destroy it. So that's why it's remembering the behavior. So it's not programmatic. So we're going to add this back in for programmatic connection. So here it defaults, and whatever I select, it will remember. But it's not remembered because of the browser behavior. It's been remembering it because we're actually selecting it. OK, well, I will save this JS bin snapshot and attach it to the video URL so you can look at it at your leisure. And that's it for right now.